We're here on the Oxford Road, which is one of the main roads leading to Pangbourne and Oxford. And until the mid 19th century, it was mainly agricultural land until it was developed into elaborate houses for the elite in Reading. In the 1950s, Reading's stable economy provided employment opportunities for Irish, Eastern European and Caribbean men and women who found affordable homes in the Oxford Road area. Today, the mix of Georgian, Victorian and modern buildings has given rise to a unique culture. This area forms part of Reading's High Street Heritage Action Zone, which was announced in September 2019. The aim of this project is to highlight the wonderful history of Oxford Road, the people who have lived and worked here, and to look forward to the future of this community by celebrating the heritage. We're here at Trinity Church on the Oxford Road, which is one of Reading's biggest thoroughfares. Trinity Church was built in 1826 by Reverend George Holm of Shinfield. The architect was Edward Garbett, who also designed the parish church in Thiel in the same year. In 1845, a Trinity Church's facade was completely changed by architect John Billing uh, to what it is today. William Fox Talbot, an English inventor of photography, photographed this church, which means it may well have been the first church ever photographed. The pulpit is a Queen Anne pulpit dating back to the 1600s, and it came from the redundant church of All Saints in Oxford. Our priests went up to look at it and decided to buy it, and they let us have it for £450. It was valued at the time around four and a half thousand pounds, so we got quite a good bargain. But now it's, it's priceless now because if it was destroyed in a fire or anything like that, you couldn't rebuild it as it is now. The organ also came from St oh, All Saints in Oxford. Um, Father Brindley was up there looking at the pulpit and they offered it to us for 150 pounds. Uh, he transported it down here and then the organ was rebuilt using part of our own Georgian organ, back to 1700s, fitted together with the, the organ from All Saints. Uh, the marble, hand marbled case came with it. It's a very fine, very fine organ, but again, it needs some restoration work. Uh, the screen was by August Pugin, made for St. Chad's Cathedral in Birmingham. In the 1960s, when they were reorganising churches, they decided they didn't want it anymore. Rude screens had gone out of fashion, so they threw it out on the scrap heap, literally. And our priest went up and had a look at it, bought it, had it transported down here and refitted in here. So that's the reason why this building is Grade 2 listed, because of the Pugin screen. The altar was paid for by a parishioner to mark the 100th anniversary of the church. There are four piers with the black marble top on top. The stained glass window, that window was covered up for the last 50 years, and we un so nobody knew what was behind it. We uncovered it, and it's in memory of George Jackson and his daughter which is almost certainly the Jackson family from Jackson's Corner. And the one next to it is for his wife. That's a very historic Reading connection with the Jackson family. We're here at the pavilion on the Oxford Road, which is now the Life Spring Church. Its site was first developed in the mid 19th century as the Clyde House School, which catered for young ladies of what was then Reading's most affluent neighborhood. Later, in 1929, the Pavilion Cinema was opened. It closed in 1979, became a bingo hall, and then a snooker hall. In April 2012, the Life Spring Church bought the property and restored it to its former Art Nouveau glory. Yes, well, we've obviously put these seats in ourselves when we first came here um, seven or eight years ago. Um, the original seats were still in, actually, but they were boarded up behind a, a false wall. Um, but when we moved in, we removed them all and eventually we replaced them ourselves. And we now use this partly to the, for the church congregation, but also as a cinema club on occasions too. 
When we first came here, the original screen and everything was still in place, but that was removed and we built up the stage so that we could operate from there. When we came, the, there was a false ceiling um, below where we are now. Um, it was held up actually by 400 cords up into the main ceiling here. Um, so our job as a church was to rep repair 400 holes in the ceiling, but also we wanted to keep the ornamental uh, part going around the side as well. So we, we repaired what needed to be repaired, replaced what needed to be replaced, and we painted it, um, probably not to its original style, but we wanted to have it in keeping with the, the old cinema that it, that it used to be. So behind me, there are two windows, which were where the original projectors used to screen um, down to, to the obviously screen at the front of the building. And uh, that's a separate little room now, but um, we've kept those features there just to remind everybody what it was at one time. So when, when we came here, as I said earlier on, there was a false ceiling. So above the ceiling had been dark and empty for the last 40, 50 years or so. And um, the windows were all darkened up, we, we think maybe from the war. And so we had to replace the windows, but we tried to keep the facades down the side um, as best as we could. And then at the front of the building were, were vents, um, which again, we've restored and, and, and managed to keep. So you may wonder why we call this the pavilion. Um, it was Riley's snooker hall before we moved in, but it was originally a cinema. And um, 1929, it was opened as the pavilion. And so we went back to the original name, which we felt was appropriate as well for our use too. We're here at Oxford Road Community School, uh, one of the most historic buildings on Oxford Road. In 1870, uh, following the Education Act, the Reading School Board was formed. And 10 years later, Oxford Road Community School was built. It was designed by local architects Morris and Stallwood in a Gothic style using red brick sourced locally. Well, I lived the first 26 years of my life just off the Oxford Road. Um, Salisbury Road is just down behind us here after the well-known West Reading Bridge. And I attended this wonderful primary school here, which um, I'm happy to be here actually. 49 years after leaving. I'm happy that people are thinking about the Oxford Road still and actually looking into the history of the Oxford Road and the richness in which it brought to Reading in that I believe the Oxford Road area was the beginning of diversity in a meaningful way in Reading. And as long as it's documented in these kinds of ways, I believe all of that rich history can be built upon and the authorities would appreciate Oxford Road for the importance it actually has in the history of Reading. I can remember my first day. It remains quite um, firmly in my mind because as a youngster, I was very, very quiet within myself. And I remember my very first day, I spent a lot of time in a room that was just here to your left. And there's one friend of mine at the time. He was a year older than me. He lived in that house opposite the school right over there. And he spent a lot of time with me that day for some reason. And I remember doing a drawing. And I remember it was in yellow and brown. And that sticks in my mind. And years later, we became quite good friends. And in fact, I'm the godfather to his first child. And he's the godfather to my first child as well. When the decimal currency came in in 1971, a 50 pence piece was actually quite interesting to us. And we actually had, we had a, a, a scheme whereby we would take some fruits to some elderly people who lived in the area. And I remember going down to Great Nolly Street, which is down the back here. And we, we called up a, a couple. They were, they were an elderly couple of, of, of ladies. They were sisters, actually. And we presented them with a bowl of, of fruits. And they were so happy that somebody had actually remembered them. They offered to give us a 50 pence piece. And of course, we, could, we weren't allowed to take it, of course. But we were accompanied by, this, by the teacher. And that type of um, involvement in the local community as school children, I thought it was a great grounding. Because one thing it learned me from that early age is that when people get older, they can be lonely. Because what stuck in my mind was that the loneliness of these two elderly ladies. And even years after I actually left primary school and I would go to George Street Park to play, these elderly ladies were three of them and they remembered me. Well, that's one of my fondest memories because, again, playing in the park, 
1970, 71, we found the old derelict steel drum and we brought it right through this entrance here and took it into the school. The music room used to be right there, on the, uh, just as we stand here, the music room was there. And that was the beginning of the Oxford Road School Steel Band. Because although we didn't have a teacher behind us, it was quite clear that we wanted to make music in the school. So that was 1971. And when we left in 1972, a school teacher, um, two school teachers took up the task and they formed the Oxford Road School Steel Band. And the Ox Oxford Road School Steel Band went on to make two or three recordings and they played for Princess Anne in 1973. When the carnival began in Reading in 1977, and the carnival came down this road here, and I remember that was a turning of a new page for Oxford Road, because having been exposed to Caribbean culture through your family and through your parents, teachers and everything, it had actually arrived. And for it to go down Oxford Road was very, very significant. So we're here at Reading West Station on the Oxford Road, which is now part of the High Street Heritage Action Zone, initiated in 2019. Railway lines were built in Reading in around about 1840 to supply transport from much of the manufacturing industries that built up in the area at the time, like Huntley and Palmer's and Sutton Seeds, in order to distribute those goods. At the same time, Reading West Station was also built and a line went through Barks and Hants directly to Reading Station. Reading West Station wasn't opened until 1906. Since then, it's changed rather dramatically. An original brick arch bridge was demolished and replaced with the bridge that currently exists, a steel girder bridge carrying trains directly to Reading Station. I was born and bred on York today, just the stones throw away Beresford Road, just around the corner. Um, I've created like, a couple of businesses, i created one uh, business networking hub um, on the Oxford Road and I'm currently a uh, graphic designer and freelance uh, print manager. So, you know, both supply services to the Oxford Road. The future of Oxford Road, I mean, what I would like to see, um, and, and it's, it's kind of happening now, are the, the, the businesses and the local community really trying to, to forge something together. I'd like to see a lot more attention going towards the Oxford Road and, and also shining a light on the people, the premises and the processes that have made the Oxford Road what it is today. A lot of the businesses were struggling, a lot of the business owners were, were families, you know, as they grew into business and the business got older, a lot of the youngsters in those families didn't want to take up the, the, the job within the business. So for me, it's, a, it's about offering some form of support, some form of advice hub where businesses can come to to find out what's happening in their community, where they can go to get advice and support to take their business to that next level. Growing up as, 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 a, as a youngster, as a child in the Oxford Road, I mean, everyone knows it was, especially as, as, as a child from an from a, from a, a, a ethnic minority family, a, a black kid, if we um, stop tiptoeing around it, um, it, it was hard, it, it, it was tough, you know, and our families, or a lot of the families that, that, that moved into the area, they were working class, um, they, they formed a community with that working class tightness. You then started seeing an influx of different types of people. You got the more arty types, you got uh, other, other community groups, other nationalities that, that started moving in um, because it was a nice place to live and it still is a, a nice place to live. But what, what I, I, I would not like people to forget is what the Oxford Road had to go through to get where it is now. This is the Oxford Road, you know, you, you take the old, you, you, you add to the old and you make something new that people enjoy and like. So don't forget where the Oxford Road has come from, the journey it's made to be what it is today um, in, in moving it forward. And let's try to move it forward in a nice trajectory that keeps things on a level path. If there's a message that I'd like to give to the children of the Oxford Road, it's believe in yourself, firstly. Um, don't, don't see any task or any challenge or any of your dreams as too big or, 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 or unachievable. You know, um, the Oxford Road's been given like a, 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 it's had a bad name attached to it for a number of years, you know, and, and myself, you know, I, I come from what society would class as a broken home, you know, and there were times in my life growing up as a kid at the same school where you, you can't see any future for yourself. But what I managed to do was, 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 was believe in myself, dig deep and really push at the things that I wanted to achieve. And for me, this is home. Like, there, there are times where we've gone through good times, we've gone through bad times. You've had tearful moments and out. And once you got back to West Redding Bridge, you knew you were home. 
you know this 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 it, I don't know I can't explain it but it's for me this is home you know even now as as a, as a grown man with kids when I drive under West Reading Bridge it just gives me a, a sense of belonging so we're here at Battle Library on Oxford Road one of the main thoroughfares in Reading Battle Library was opened in 1907 after a lot of campaigning by local groups to have local libraries open to the common man in Reading. It featured a juvenile library, a lending library, a newspaper room, a magazine room and a back office for staff. It was designed in a Renaissance style by F.W. Albury, who was appointed when he won the commission in a competition with three other local architects. This architect also designed other local buildings, the shops on Duke Street and King Street in Town Centre and the corn stores on Forbury Road. There are ornamental ventilation turrets all around the building which were a particular focus in public buildings at the time. The three carved heads that are over the top of the entrance are thought to represent Newton, or sometimes Milton, Shakespeare and Darwin. The entrance hall is lit by a colourful stained glass depicting the arms of Reading Abbey, Reading Borough and the University of Reading. In 1907, the opening ceremony was interrupted by terrible weather and Edward Jackson, the mayor at the time, along with other dignitaries, was forced to Elm Park Hall next door for the speeches. It was originally called Reading West Library and it was a a sum of money that was donated by a man called Andrew Carnegie and around the world Andrew Carnegie who had been a very successful steel magnet a man who was born in Scotland and went to America he gave money to help people to use libraries all around the world he gave the Carnegie Hall in, in New York. He gave all sorts of places. This is something that has benefited from his help. So it was built about 1907, and it has always been a library for the community, apart from around 1915, it was seconded by the War Department um, to house an overflow of people who were coming back from the Western Front. Soldiers who were injured, who were coming back from the First World War. Royal Voucher Hospital was full and they needed somewhere to house more of the soldiers. And at first, they used the, the old workhouse, which was at the Battle Hospital, and then they realised they needed more space, so the library was used as well. It was when I came that I wanted to make it more of a community hub. So the, the hall was emptied and that's when, weeks after I came, uh, the local health authority started a baby clinic, which turned into having a breastfeeding clinic. We then found space for people who wanted to have classes to help people who didn't speak English as a first language. We had job seeking advice, we had all sorts of community events that happened in the big hall, as well as sing along with Marjorie, when mums from all over the place came for, for sessions to, to sing with their toddlers. I worked here for about 15 years. It was a very wonderful experience. There was one time when I discovered that an orchestra was coming to the, um, the town hall and um, I wrote and said, would they like to come down and do their rehearsal on the Saturday morning down the library because just to let the people down here um, experience live, live music. And um, they, they had um, a string quartet and a brass quartet and they didn't just play in here, they then played outside on the Oxford Road. It was great fun and people gathered just to hear this, this wonderful music. I think that the Oxford Road should be celebrated. I think we have to encourage people that first of all it is called the Oxford Road but it's not just about the Oxford Road. It's about a whole area where people live, people work, people go to school, people come to shop. There are some fascinating and 
very different shops down here and I think that it should be an area to be celebrated. There's lots of history as Reading was growing, the railway came, the, the schools came, the churches came, the library came and the back-to-back -back houses, they all came at that very, very special um, time and, um, and it's grown from that and I, I do think that um, the message to the community is to celebrate what you've got. Um, it's an area um, that's constantly evolving. It's an area with a fantastic diversity of people and it should be celebrated. I thought when we were doing our census the other day, every 10 years, we, we say what we do, it would be really nice if the children of the Oxford Road, not just every 10 years, but maybe every two years, every five years, could actually look at the Oxford Road and write about it, take photographs of it, because we need constant snapshots. As it's evolving, it's changing. And if they can record their friends, their families, where they shop, where they live, what the park's like, we can keep those as the history of the Oxford Road. I remember the people who came into the library and the, I met lots and lots of people who were very, very special and some who lived, had lived on the Oxford Road all their lives. People have moved on around the world. I still keep in touch with, with some of those people. It was a very lovely place to work. Oxford Road will continue to influence Reading as a hub of cultural diversity and creative innovation. Oxford Road is always moving, changing and evolving and that's something we can take inspiration from and contribute to as members of this bustling community.